G'day. Today we're going to get how Solaris system connected to the internet. And this is how system here, which is a 486 system. And it's on my local area network, which has a gateway address of 192.168.1.1. During the installation of Solaris, we assigned this machine a host name, and I'm just using Solaris. And we gave it an IP address, a static IP address of 192.168.1.123. Now, once you've got Solaris installed, there's three steps you need to take to actually be able to access the internet. And the first step is to set up the default router. So it's just a matter of logging into the system as root and going to the etc directory and to create a file called default router and entering in the IP address of your uh, gateway or, the, or for the router and in my case that's 192.168.1.1 okay once you've created that file this next step is to set up the DNS name server address or addresses and that's in the resolve config which is um, also in the same directory so I've just used bi and I've created or edited the file resolv.com and in that file um, I've just added my domain and then the two important things that need to be added are the name server. So I have name server and then I've just used 8.8.8.8 uh, .8 which is the Google DNS and I've also then added a secondary name server. So in the next line it's name server and I've used 1.1.1.1 so four ones and that is the Cloudflare um, DNS and then I've saved that file and then the third step is to update the nsswitch.config file and all you need to do in that file is open it find the host line and add at the beginning of the host line um, you'll probably have files and what we're going to do we're going to add dns space open square brackets uppercase not found no spaces equals lowercase return close brackets so then now it should try and use the dns first to resolve any host names and then it will use file after that so save that file Reboot your system, and now you should be able to uh, surf the internet. Services such as Telnet, if you install Netscape or another browser, uh, you should now have access. Um, you should also be able to uh, Telnet in, which I'm going to use locally, and I'm going to also be using FTP to transfer files to this system. and. I have a copy of Samba, which I'm going to set up as well, so I can actually um, mount files easily between my Windows boxes, uh, or even a Raspberry Pi to move files around. Okay, um, enjoy the video, and not the greatest video, but it was a lot of fun um, getting this machine connected. Okay, cheers, thanks for watching. Hi, we've installed Solaris. Uh Seven or Sun OS 5.7 on our 486 system, and now we're just going to make a few changes to some configuration files that allow us to have access to the internet on the system. So I'm just going to log in as root, and when we installed the machine, we gave it a host name and an IP address. And the host name that I've used was just Solaris. And I've just allocated an IP address uh, that's 
iron for my home networking router and that was uh, 192.168.1.123 the gateway address of my router is 192.168.1.1 and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 so what we're going to do we're just going to update some of the configuration files and set the gateway and set up the name servers so during the installation for our name service we selected other so now we just need to modify some files and first we'll do is the uh, gateway and we'll set that up and I'm just going to this. Okay, we'll just let that generate. This is our first log on this machine. Okay, we're waiting for that. What we're going to do, we're going to just bring up a console. So I'm just going to, okay, tools. Terminal, we'll do this from the terminal. Okay, we're just going to change into the ETC directory off root. Okay, the first file we're going to edit is the NS switch config file, which is C O and F. Okay, and what we need to do is go down to the host line and add DNS. Okay, DNS and not found. Okay, so if we have anything in the host file, excellent. Okay, that's the first file we've modded. So that is the nsswitch.conf, the config file. And we've just changed the host line and added DNS and the not found return then user file okay so first it's going to use the dns okay we now need to actually set up the uh, dns information and the uh, gateway information okay so we're going to save that okay excellent okay it's saved close this wonderful The system's not super fast on my 486 machine, but it is definitely usable. And we can use Telnet to access the machine remotely. And we can even uh, use how X11 server on our machine to open up Windows, which is pretty cool. Okay. So now let's see. Gonna set up our default router. Okay, to do that, we're going to use good old text edit. You could use VI if you wanted to, but we're in a graphical environment. So uh, let's use the uh, built-in text editor. Okay, so we need to have a default Router file, okay, so default router, let's see, what's 
good. Okay. Okay. So there's our default. Okay. We're going to create that file. Okay. And we're just going to put in the uh, gateway address. So in my case is 192.168.1.1 okay so you'll just need to check on your router to find out what the gateway address is which will typically be the address of the actual router okay and now we need to set up our um, resolver for our dns so we're going to text edit and it is okay all of these files are in the etc folder okay so the file that we're going to edit is the dns resolver information which is another config file and this is r e s o lv dot c o n f okay let's edit this config file okay okay we've created the file okay set up a domain okay that will depend on your environment but the important thing here is the name servers okay I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use Google. So I'm going to 8.8.8.8. And then I'll also, as my fallback, I'll use uh, Cloudflare, which is 1.1.1. Okay, so there's uh, two name servers. These will work, but if you want to use a different name server, that's fine. Okay, but for me, this will work. Okay, so save. Okay, close that. Okay, let's go ping. Okay, that's the gateway. Now, do I need to restart the machine for this to take effect? Okay, let's see. Okay. Oops. Router. Let's see. Okay. Okay, what we might do is quickly reboot our machine and this will take a moment, so let's just sit back and relax. Let's make sure that we've got that right. Router, that all looks good. Okay, let's just have a look at that. Okay, that looks fine. What we're going to do, we're going to reboot our system. And then we'll see if we have access to the internet. So basically what we've done, we've created the default router file. We've created the Resolver config, and we've edited the NS switch config file. And once those three files have either been created or edited, you should have access to the internet. So 
So if it's just like uh, Telnet, FTP, I am still looking at setting up SSH on this machine, but for now I'll be using Telnet. Um, we're also going to install Netscape later. Okay, here's a wonderful boot. Oh, Solaris, oh, watch fingers. Okay, not the fastest thing to boot up. But we are running on a 486 system. Okay, there's the host name, Solaris. Coming up, excellent. Services are being started. It's a subnet mask. Okay, let's find out. Okay, we're going to, this is so we can update our configuration and I'm going to bypass in the present future. The Trident 1 meg graphics card is working perfectly. The monitor frequency for this uh, monitor is fine and I am using a free button uh, mouse. Okay, and it's on a serial port and that's all working fine. So I'm going to press F5, so we don't need to see that again on the next boot. Okay, it's spinning up the CD, the installation CD, which is still in the drive, which I can now remove. There's nothing else I need to install. Okay, we're going to wait for the graphical logon prompt. Okay, and we'll just bring up a terminal window and we'll see if we can actually ping something like Google or how local uh, commercial broadcaster and once we've done that we shall install our Netscape for now, I don't need two copies of it running. Okay. Let's see, have we made any progress? Google is alive, isn't that wonderful? Okay, that is fantastic. Okay, no problems with Google. Ah, that's better. Okay, that is looking really, really promising. Okay, then we'll see what we can do. Okay, and let's see, can we turn it out? So, let's try that. Net and let's go. Tell dot I can 
lights. Ah, oh, lovely. We actually have access to, and we're only using uh, IPv4. Absolutely bloody marvellous. Okay, so after you've edited those three files, which I recommend doing once you've installed your copy of Solaris, you'll have access to the internet. And Tornet certainly works. Hot Java is a hot pile of garbage. Um, so you, I would install Netscape and that's what we're going to do next. Okay, look at that. Absolutely bloody marvelous. I'll just let this run through for a moment and then we'll get on and we shall install. Uh, okay, so it's good to test out this terminal to find out the ASCII control sequences. Yeah, they seem to work okay. Yeah, so it's behaving like a VT100. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to sit here and watch the whole of Solaris today. Um, Wow, so much really should do this and um, with music, compose some original music. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay, let's get on with this and let's get uh, Netscape installed so we can uh, start surfing the internet. Okay, cool. Okay, we're going to install Netscape on this. Uh, 486 Solaris 7 machine. What we've done, we've installed gzip and we downloaded the pre-compiled binary from the SMC archive, which I've included a link in the description. This is a very useful location. It has a lot of pre-compiled binaries that'll get you up uh, and running. It's got Bash, it's got Emacs, it's got uh, compilers. Can do your GNU CC and uh, Fortran 77. It's got Make. It has a lot of really useful tools, and especially Bash and T Shell, and that will make life a lot easier. Especially if you're more familiar with being in a Bash type environment. Okay, so we've installed GZIP, and I've found a copy of Netscape. Uh, and it's the version 4.06 for uh, Solaris x86 and I believe this was uh, designed for Solaris uh, 5.2 but I'm hoping that it will function on my copy. Okay, so I've FTP'd the files across to this machine Okay, we're going to run the script. I'm just going to make sure that it will run. And okay, and it is called ns install. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's run the script. Okay, and I just installed that to use a local bin, which I shall add to my path. Okay, I'm happy with that. Do you wish to install? Yes. Okay, the script's running without error. Java components and let's let this Java run and which is quite appropriate yep 
yeah, I recommend checking out the SMC archive for those pre-compiled binaries. You don't need to update uh, um, Solaris 7. There's also another great project you can find on GitHub, which is the uh, TGCWare project, which has a lot of pre-compiled binaries and also the source. Unfortunately, that requires that you update your copy of uh, Solara 7 for that to actually run. Okay, let's see. But I believe now that I can actually install a compiler, I should be able to compile the uh, TGC where components if they're required. But at the moment, I'm just going to stick to the pre-compiled binaries from SMC and I'll look at uh, compiling the more recent uh, TGC where stuff later on. Okay, so let's see. That has actually run through the script. Let's see if we can actually open Netscape. Uh, cannot execute. Okay. If I can type, okay. Connection refused. Okay. Mm. Okay. again and then hmm. let's see why it shouldn't run as root hmm. okay and I'll change it to the open Windows desktop. Okay, this is the first time I've logged in on the 486 Solaris machine as a regular user, even though I did tell Ned in earlier, just to make sure that the account worked. Okay, so I'm just using the Open Windows desktop. Okay. Nice. Okay, file manager. Yeah, I'll just minimize that. I'll close it. Okay, for now. Yeah, there's the CD. That's actually nice. Yep, file manager quit. Super fast. Okay. Maybe I should check out the uh, help viewer later. Okay. Ah, and there's good old hot Java, which is a hot pile of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, what I'm more interested in can we actually get Netscape to actually load on this machine? Uh, 
Okay, so it is a permission issue. Okay. So. I'm just going to be really dodgy for a moment. <laughs> Make myself. Okay, I've installed uh, Netscape from the script, but we still have a problem that it won't actually run it. So I believe I just need to change the permissions to allow all users to be able to execute it. So I'm just, I'm now in the directory where it's installed. And uh, this is, ch mod all plus x star okay and now let's see if we can actually open Netscape okay it hasn't actually given us an error Ah, let's accept. This is looking a bit more promising. Okay, let's get rid of hot dogs. Okay, we've got an error. But it looks like it is opening. Oh, it's actually opened. Okay, it's not going to find that location. Home.netscape, not, oh, it's not found. Okay, well, let's try a site that I know does exist. Okay, it looks like that we have been able to install Netscape 4.06. And it does allow us to access some web pages <laughs> okay not well but it does work as opposed to okay yeah registration don't worry about that at this point okay let's see It's not the fastest uh, graphics card, and but it actually does render eventually. Okay, that is starting to look a bit better, kind of. Ah, let's see. Okay, we can run Netscape. Okay. Okay, and wonderful. It actually does uh, allow us to do a search. And later we'll check out some classic uh, early web pages that should render fine. This is bloody marvellous. Yeah, the Netscape homepage, yeah, we'll change that because it no longer exists. But we can actually surf the web. Yeah, anything that uh, requires uh, JavaScript, yeah, not so much. It's probably a good thing. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's log on. Yeah, but that's still really, really cool. Okay, well, we'll uh, have a bit more fun with uh, Netscape and we're going to uh, get our compilers running and I think I would like to install some classic tools from the past, like PG Pop, which is something that is quite a bit in the late uh, 80s, early 90s. Okay. 
this should be a lot of fun. Okay, well, thanks for watching and we will catch you next time. Bye.